there was a turtle by the name of Bert, and the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He ducked and cover, ducked and cover. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. The tuner is back in the set and it's all wired up and this resistor right here, 470 ohm resistor, uh, was fried right out of that thing. It just totally cooked and it was attached, one end was attached to this uh, 0.047 microfarad capacitor. Now look right there in the center. Let me get it over here where we can get a good look at it. Right there in the center blown right through the side this thing one end of this thing was connected to ground and the other end was connected to the 470 uh, ohm resistor and it just just fried it right out of there kind of neat huh you know some people say well you know you can just replace your electrolytics and then just go ahead and turn your radio on or whatever with your wax capacitors in there you know just for checkout purposes uh-uh not me I will never leave wax capacitors in the radio after I change the electrolytics and just bring it up on a variac or just turn it on for this reason right here I could not see that because it was on the inside facing the uh, the copper box you don't know what you're going to have so don't take any chances get rid of all these nasty old crappy things you know they did their job in their day but their day is over get rid of them it only takes one bad one to burn down your house. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. All right, uh, other than putting the tubes in, and I'm going to do something with this right here. The more I look at that, the more I don't like that. that that's, that's really tacky. I can't handle that. We're going to have to take that apart and figure out a different way make it look a little neater much like this one over here this one looks a lot neater you have to know what happens when an atomic bomb explodes you will know when it comes we hope it never comes but we must get ready it looks something like this there is a bright flash brighter than the sun brighter than anything you've ever seen if you are not ready and did not know what to do it could hurt you in different ways it could knock you down hard or throw you against a tree or a wall it is such a big explosion, it can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over town. Last time I had a, I took a piece of a aluminum flashing and wrapped, you know, I put the lid down on top of the capacitors and then I put the flashing around the outside and then put the tape around it. Well, this time I decided to put the flashing on the inside, whereas I should have put it to begin with. And then we'll stick this down because there's a space here. Uh, between these uh, two that was just a little bit too big once I got the capacitors in there it wouldn't quite go down so it's down about that far I got that much of a space to make up for so I used the flashing to do it and now that I have it on the inside I'll put the tape back around it and it'll be a little bit neater first you duck and then you cover and very tightly you cover the back of your neck and your face Duck and cover underneath a table or desk or anything else close by. All right, that's a lot neater. It's a lot neater all the way around. It'd be easy to open up, just take the tape off, slide the top right off it if the person ever needs to do it in the future. All right, the only thing left to do with this thing now is to put all the tubes in and hook her up i guess <laughs> stand by for the big event we're fixing to put the tubes back in i'm gonna let you see me do the first one it's a 6sn7 gt there's the first one number one is back in and there's a 6au6 tube number eight all the tubes are now back in and all the tube shields are on and in coordination with Brendan up in Detroit 
I've already applied power to it and uh, checked out to see if the tubes would all work and to make sure there was no smoke, <laughs> no fire, or any of that sort of stuff. I didn't want to bring this up, you know, on a YouTube video without checking with him first. That that would be kind of a silly thing to do, really. So, but I'll show you what we're doing. This B plus section you see right here, you know, the the choke and and the, the two diodes, or which used to be the selenium rectifiers, and the two capacitors down here. What comes out of that choke? It goes through here and then through the choke last. And what comes through the, out of the choke winds up over here at pin 6 on this yoke plug. Everything that comes out of here, DC voltage, comes over to right there. And I've got a alligator clip connected to the bottom of it. Now, from here at pin 6, it jumps across to pin 7. It jumps from pin 6 to pin 7 across this little jumper you see on the yoke plug right here coming out of the pitcher tube. Yoke. Okay? From pin 6 over to pin 7. So what that means is any time this plug is unplugged from there the voltage comes from here over here in this section right here to here and that's as far as it goes nice little safety factor actually you unplug this plug and no B plus goes to anywhere in this chassis not at all so it, it and it also affords us a really nifty little test point here because we can test everything that's coming out of here now this is a voltage doubler setup what does that mean it means it doubles whatever voltage comes out of the power transformer secondary so if I have uh, say 90 volts uh, fed uh, in in the uh, chassis from the variac I probably will be reading you know 180 volts or uh, more uh, from this connector right here which is connected to my multimeter so we're going to be able to bring up the voltage, you know, kind of slow and easy like using the, the variac and then read the voltage right here, the B plus voltage. And there's no load attached to the chassis. So the voltage is going to be, you know, much higher than it normally would be. But like I said, we're only looking for smoke and, and that sort of thing and to make sure all the tubes light up. And uh, incidentally, the tubes run off AC voltage. They do not have, they, do, they are not supplied voltage from the, from the uh, B plus. They're off a separate winding on the transformer for the dial lights and the filaments, AC. The rest coming over here that we're going to measure is DC. So let's do that. Here are some older boys showing what to do if the flash comes when you are not in the classroom. This is what to do if you should be in a corridor. You duck and cover tight against the wall this way. Remember to keep your face and the back of your neck covered tightly. Try to fall away from windows or doors with glass in them. Then, if the glass breaks and flies through the air, it won't cut you. All right, here we go. We're going to watch the voltage come up here. I'll be keeping my eye on the amp meter, of course. I don't want too many amps to be drawn. And then we'll glance over here at the multimeter and compare the voltage coming here to that point right there relative to what's being fed into it. So here goes. Let's go ahead and crank up the voltage. You'll notice we got a nice big old jump there in current. It should come down, and it is. We're at 109 volts already, and we're only up here at a little over almost 40. So let's take it up a little bit further. Let's take it up to 60 volts. Remember now, this is a voltage doubling setup. We got 60 volts there, and already we're at 185. That may seem awfully high, but that's okay because there's no load on this thing. That's it to pull it down. Okay, once current starts flowing through all this stuff, it'll pull down the voltage. Nothing's hooked up to it right now. So let's go up here to 
Let's go to 80 volts. Right there's 80. All right, we're sitting at 240. And our current is pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. Now let's go ahead and go up to... Tell you what, let's set this up to 260 volts, which is the B plus for this television. We're sitting at just about 90 volts, not just shy of 90 volts. As you can see, all the uh, all the tubes are lit. Everything looks real good. That one's lit. That one's lit. Everything is lit. Everything is lit the way it's supposed to. Fantastic. So the only thing left to do now is to put it back in the cabinet and hook it up to the picture tube and see what we get. I'm ready. I am ready for this. The bomb might explode when there are no grown-ups near. Paul and Patty know this and they are always ready to take care of themselves. Here they are on their way to school on a beautiful spring day. But no matter where they go or what they do, they always try to remember what to do if the atom bomb explodes right then. It's a bomb, duck and cover. All right, here goes. Let's go ahead and bring up the, the voltage on the B+. Plus. And we're over here. 34, we're at 50 volts, 156. Oof. That seems awfully high for 50 volts, especially since I've got everything hooked up, the whole load's on. Let's go ahead and go up 260. I'm still at 90 volts. And I'm, I'm getting some sound. All right, hear it? <laughs> All right, look what I have here, ladies and gentlemen. Look what I have here. I have a raster. Something needs adjusting, but you know, we're only at 90 volts. All right, there's 229. Okay, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Look at there, see that that tube came on, lit up, the raster lit up, and it pulled the voltage down. You're down to 230. Let's crank it up a little bit more. Now we're at 264. And we're at a little over 100. And you can see the much brighter picture. It'll definitely need some adjustment. <laughs> I don't know whether I should take this thing all the way up to 120 or not. I want to, it's at 278. 278 volts. 279. And we're up here to about, well, maybe 109 volts. Well, I don't know what to do at this point, you know. It could be, it could be because I need to cut the voltage down as a result of changing those selenium rectifiers to diodes. If so, I have a resistor I can do that with, but at this point, I'm just kind of happy. Look at that. We actually have volume and a nice raster on that TV. Oh, God, Jackie Gleason. It won't be long now. Okay, folks, that's it. That's all I'm going to do here tonight. I'm going to show this to my, uh, my mentor. Show him that at almost not quite 100 volts, we're showing 277. And uh, we'll finish this up in the next video after I get his advice as to what to do from here on out. This is John. Pretty happy fella right now. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. What are you supposed to do when you see the flash? Duck! Duck!